fair to let her cook. I, yes, it was with Astrid, but they almost beat Imperial, right, in the grand final on that map and probably rightly should have pushed that game to OT and won it. So I'm not counting them out at any point. And neither should you, neither should Na'Vi. Do or die was how I opened tonight. And do or die is how Inferno will open. Na'Vi undefeated until yesterday on this map. T side where they do most of their work. Let's see what they can do against Let Her Cook in the game that decides who goes to the finals. And yeah, lives and breathes on the gates of hell immediately in map one set up for Letter Cook. Dual Berettas, four guns, two players waiting in the wings on Banana. And for Na'Vi, they are all here immediately. A boost up and an instant decapitation. It just needs one bullet to remove one member of the defense. And yeah, Melly's got 30 bullets though. Won't fire any. We'll run away. Doesn't want to get separated by the flames. Escapes. And so Navi established control of Top Banana. Let her cook a split. 2 2 on each side. Inside, just jiggling the angle. We'll spot D7 on it. Sees her crossing. Now she's going to go try and support her teammate. And does look like Navi want to scale. And smokes are going to be landing out towards Moto. Again, cutting off the rotations. A push to and decide D7 takes down one. Mana Shine manages to find two. But she will be removed. So in a three on two, the bomb will be planted. Advantage with Na'Vi. No utility. That, that's the scary thing. No kit unless there's one on the site. For letter Kirk uh, and Spike smoked off. So it needs to be Melly taking the contact initially. Last time, Na'Vi tried to challenge out short, but it's Hanker remaining firm. And Jelka tucks in the site alongside Astra. But with Melly creating a little bit of space, suddenly they're in. In. Astra finds the first shot, but it's all melee. The dual Berettas will be successful and let her cook win the retake. Yeah, a bit of relief for Melly, thanking her lucky stars on that one, but that was a clean retake from Melly. Gets that immediate headshot onto Hanka and gets to an angle where she can finish the job. Just sees the arm jutting out. That's all she needs. Beautiful shots with the dualies. They realize that time is going to be the issue. Don't take it slow. Spikes the distraction, and Melly on the warpath takes down three. We get to see this one back. Beautiful stuff. It happened yesterday, and it's already happened here. One round of play. Na'Vi really need to work on their afterplants, because even though they're tucked in sight, they are playing off each other to an effect. There's not a crossfire there. So you are able just to isolate those kills. And that's something that kept cropping up in that series against Dreamcatchers. It almost felt like they were scared to take space. It is just the pistol round, but it is worth noting as we move forward into this series. Spike and Jonana again taking residency top banana. Jonana forced back. Spike isolated and they dropped on her. How many can she find? Well, with that flashbang, it's a good start. But one, it might not be enough. Oh, that swing though is oh. brilliant from Jonana. She manages to remove two. Definitely enough comes through. VQ picks up that AK. Melly sitting on the edge, wants to get flashed through as well. And that might be a mistake. D7 hits the headshot. So back into the two on two. Manashine is fast up banana. VQ goes back to have a look, but doesn't see her. One side looking for the timing and will be rewarded. D7 decapitated over the edge. And now Manashine's push. The timing looks good. Navi falls into it and let her cook. They take the round. Can't believe Jonana gets two there. She's just in the open. Navi do such a good job to isolate Spike, going one for one. You think, mm, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. And then Jonana just doesn't shy away from the danger, just swings wildly. And where it's lesser weaponry for Navi, remember, this was a four. So you've got Deagles, you've got a couple of Galils in the mix. You can't just hit the shots instantaneously. Jonana making sure. That Na'Vi get off to a sluggish start. It's a lot of utility being invested in around these pistols. They've kept enough money to get a full buy into the next. But what's the plan here with all the util? Yeah, I think D7 and VQ kind of got split up there as well. VQ was very scared about behind. That ends up taking down anyway. Three HEs is the interesting part of this util in my mind. What do they want to do? They don't have a molly to flush out these positions, so I don't know how you get past this double MP9 crossfire. That feels really difficult. 
you need to stack one of these positions? Or are they just gonna contact it? This feels like you're gonna lose all this utility in a second. These two MP9s, poised for success. And Joanna takes three again, four, before she's removed. Job's done. One of the smokes did land deep. Can D7 get the bomb down? That would feel like a victory. And I don't think she will. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, she will. Sun's like, won't swing immediately. Sorry, D7 gets the bomb down. You take down two. You're okay with that. Yeah, it's uh, it's almost just like an agreement. That's fine. We, we'll lose all of our utility, but in fact, we didn't need it to get the bomb down. And now that floods the, the bank account. If VQ wants an AWP, D7 can drop it. So you have got options here if you're Na'Vi. But a free zero start. And I think what's interesting is, obviously, we're speaking about full circle. We're speaking about the first week, the, the very first game of the broadcast where Na'Vi took on Let Her Cook. And it was defined in overtime on Inferno, but it was the T sides that were doing most of the heavy lifting. Seven, five halves for both of these teams on their offense. So Let Her Cook have already got three on CT. That's a vast improvement. We saw Navi's struggles on the CT side yesterday in plain sight. The start of this round, Astra and Hanka combine to remove one. We let the cook only got what one CT round first pick keeper yesterday. Yeah, I think it was three total all series. So they've equaled that. Yep. And three times as many on Inferno. They're, they're very happy. Mana Shrine's walked over because this time Spike, who's been playing sandbags every single round, just gets naded. Doesn't fire off uh, a single bullet. Jonana here as the normal resident of B, just tucking in, just behind the pillar on Fountain. It's going to be this exec. Anchor taking her time. Needs to clear every angle. Jonana poised for success. Counter flashbangs good out of mana shine but astra hits the immediate trade yeah good damage from Jonana. takes down one and a lot of on to astra but gives the advantage oh melee oh. almost the chance there but astra swings through on low hp denies the denial and sunsight's just going to save the orb most certainly so navi will get on the board i think this actually a lot of these mid rounds will hinge on astra not only for her call in but also going for these brave plays because you've got to remember that she's played so much for Letter Cook. She knows exactly what plays they're going to make. So her standing in, her making sure that she steps in, even on low HP, just to deny Melly there on the MP9 because Letter Cook will do that. They will push the issue. They will go above and beyond to try and deny the bomb at the first instance, create chaos. And even on these retakes, they'll be fast about them. They will push every smoke. They will try and create any opportunity. I think Astra has to be the feature piece in this for Na'Vi in understanding what Leda Kirk are trying to get up to. A nice double nade. Spike being punished a little bit there already. I think that's the third HE she's taken. Who kills? VQ has to use her orb. The Sunside did save hers. Dropped an M4 for a teammate, so they've got something together. She brings the orb towards B. Oh, oh, back no. again, removed by Util, oh. and Hanka just swings on Sunside. It's actually interesting just watching Jonanna play Banana because she she's a lot more passive, which you don't normally associate with Jonanna, but compared to her teammates, right? It, it feels like if Sunside is going back in for that aggressive move, you also need Jonanna there. Suddenly, Melly, although she finds D7, D7's got all the info on the death cam. These players were trying to take in towards top brackets. That means that Coffins it is probably clear, and you've already got VQ posted on Banana. This would have to be a save for Letter Cook. I just think there's yeah, a, a little bit of confusion there on top Banana. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm... What do you reckon to Spike swinging out car there when you got Sunside posted with the AWP on... So... Fallen? I don't, so I don't hate it for the sole reason that I think it's Spike swinging to try and draw in aggression. She falls back and then they go into Sunside's crosshair, right? I think they're trying to draw in that fight. But if you're making a play like that, I think you need Jonanna 
either lining up flashbangs, which she wasn't doing from her position initially, or she's right there with Sunsides to help Spike escape. It feels like they're, they're so isolated in what they're trying to achieve. I think Spike got stuck by the molly. If you notice where it lands, just on the right-hand side of car. She wanted to peek, fall back, but then she got stuck. So don't mind the idea. It was just undone by Na'Vi's utility. Now you've got your two saved rifles. Let a cooker on the back foot. And he wants to get aggressive. Flames. We'll keep her at bay, though. We've split the two rifles, a sight each. Utility being utilized to keep them out of B, which has been where Navi put most of their pressure outside the pistol. Hit Navi would have watched that big demo game back against Ladder Cook and just saw how easy it was for the likes of Giuliano, Pauli to, to scale up Banana. Just throw a lot of aggression on it because Letter Cook, uh, the variance wasn't really there in terms of taking Banana deep. We've only really seen that with the MP9s, but it's against low economy. So you feel like you can take that risk. Pressure getting to both teams and it's which one will crack first, which one will deviate away from their normal playing style. Melly's going to be caught here and that's A for free. Yeah, a little creepy curly forward from Melly. Anka's not going to hear these rotations because of deep CT, but not going to matter because Navi will be ahead of it. That's right. <laughs> They've got to be careful crossing. They do get over successfully. Not much of a threat in this round, but the bodies are here. Yeah, Hanka would have conned this over, though, because she's already in CT. She would have said, be clear. They've already rotated. Could be behind you in top brackets. Scaling short. I've got long. So now everyone can focus more over towards short. That's why you've got this pit and mini pit crossfire. Hanka starts going through the smoke. Spike eliminated. Much better at a Na'Vi in the mid round. Communication. That's a clear example of it flowing. Very least the M4 will get saved. So, well, will it? Because Angelica's about to swing. Okay, it, it might. <laughs> nice shot from Sunside. Navi will equalize. Sequence of very nice rounds from them on this T side. Fortunate time for Melia. It really felt like she was going to start pushing down towards Banana, but she just wanted to see if she could catch that D7 lurk that's often in apartments. Wasn't there this time. That's what she was holding for. You're wondering why she looks so silly. Spike, getting aggressive. Doesn't find success. I think the, the game plan... Oh, nice shot. The game plan here is to get Spike as aggressive as possible to try and take map control for Letter Cook, but she's just been shut down this entire first half. And now it's D7's turn to turn on the burners. Quick kills from her in apartment, scaling up short. That's the round done and dusted. Sunside, who started B, will be remaining here for the remainder of the round. This sort of rounds that Letter Cook normally pull out on, on their T sides. If a Navi to kind of set the tempo with a round like this, as soon as Letter Cook get their guns out, that feels brutal. A shot. A shot, yeah. I guess to keep the AWP, maybe. Navi have money if they want to try and hunt. Um, don't Gonna have infinite money. Yeah, but also don't fight into this too heavily because there, there is actually a world in which you can kill both of you and go get the defuse. <laughs> like, so. She does have a kit, yeah. <laughs> Astra should be locking this in. Sunside runs away. But to be honest, when you look at the pieces, right? Angelka, Hanka, D7, even Astra, you expect Na'Vi to play a little bit. Let her cook esque, if you will. Fantastic flash. Oh, should be the kill. Ooh, it's messy. Oh, she hasn't goodness. she hasn't got it. Never mind, Orp lives. <laughs> How? How does it live? We don't know. But Sunsides. I think that flash that. kind of made it it helped her out because she ran well, away when she got flashed. Yeah, whereas yeah. Astra would have just walked on her. Yeah, actually I think you're right. I just She should have died. Like <laughs> she just should have died. She just hits a no scope. Yeah, you know, D7's kills were great. 
They were. And well done to Inside for, for getting, what, three exits, keeping the ult? That, that's actually quite good. Should be deployed in short this round. So at least the AWP's been dynamic here for Letter Kirk. Navi back to basics, a slower default. They know the economy's on thin ice here for Letter Kirk, so they want to slow things down. They want to make sure they don't get undone by anything overly aggressive that Letter Kirk like to bring out. I like to imagine. So Spike's got one of those microphones that kind of goes out and under. Like it's a different, it's a. Uh, it's not condenser, it's like a different, I don't know what the technical term is. But I like to think of it as, imagine if you had like a corn cob on there. What a great way to eat corn that would be. <laughs> Hands-free corn cob consumption. Only you would say that. <laughs> Just a yeah, I mean, thing I, to eat, you know? I guess. I'm going to invent one. Yeah, I'm sure it's flying. watching at home. <laughs> flying off the shelves. Hey, my cornists out there, they understand. Any cornheads in the chat? <laughs> this is 30 seconds, by the way. Sure, it's only pistols, but imagine if these eagles just pop off. Spike would only need one headshot. If you deny the bomb on the cross, it's actually a little bit scary, but the flashbangs are brilliant. Jonana forced in deep behind the box. That needs to be cleared. Astra will be the one to do it. No stone unturned on B. Navi forge a path into B. B7 gets a little hasty on her flank and Mana Shine hears her, turns around. So that's a. Well, she has to go back and grab the orb. So D7 actually wasn't loud. She just killed Sunside. <laughs> Which was loud, I suppose. So this orb continues to be attempted to be saved. I do, I, I don't mind that last second execute just because it means if the orb's not in position, like you're not going to run into a stack most likely, or if you are, no. it's, it's unlikely to have the orb in it. So there's some virtues, it's risky obviously, but there's virtues. Good news is that they've got loads of money, so Manashine can still drop an orb over to Sunside. I think when Navi are prioritizing Banana quite a lot, you know that there is a lurk typically with D7, as you mentioned, out in second mid. Just get aggressive in towards apartments. We saw it with Spike, but it was on our own. Maybe if you're setting it up like close on the edge, just watching the stairs, you've then got your rifler holding the bedroom. But that could be a little bit better of a variation because you can also get info as to whether players are in second middle or not. Sunside forced off the angle. A spike spam does a lot of damage to Hanker. That's a little bit more of a safe approach to take an aggressive line. Fantastic damage. Good incendiary. Lands just as Navi want to get aggressive. BQ tries to peek around it, but doesn't see anything. A short push will certainly be dangerous. This is going to employ Hanker as a ramp holder, just in case there is a push on B, which I think there, there actually is. might be. So, oh, no, she doesn't go around. She threatens it. I think they were really hoping for that push to come in because you can see where Na'Vi are stationed. They've got top brackets, but they're just holding for a reaction. Whether that comes in through re-aggression out of Letter Cook over towards A or Jonana going deeper on B, Hanker catching that you can just... Escalate up banana. 40 seconds. Got to think about these rotates. Where would Letter Cook go? Now it's just the retake of banana. Trying to force a retake away. Trying to force an extra rotate. But Na'Vi, their mind set in stone. It needs to be A. And it needs to be D7 trying to deal with melee. Sunside removes Astra. Falls back to it. Another line and another easy shot for her. Nothing threatening about it. No flashbang. No, no swing. One by one, they fall. That felt like a, a Na'Vi round that was based off anti-strat. They were really hoping for the reaction of Joe Nana to go through that smoke. Because as soon as you kill her, you can then scale B. I think that was the original intent. When they don't see her, they have to use their utility. But it, because it's at the base of Banana, Joe Nana knows, well, they can't be here. And if they are, I'm certainly going to hear them. 
I'm surprised there was a lack of utility invested there on A to, to try and upset Sunside. Well, Sunside will take that every day of the week. Simple shots, and now she looks to take a more aggressive line in the apartments. Holding for the jump up. And T7 will actually give her the opportunity. She runs away. That's good control that she's now established in the apartment. Reaction for Leather Cook is to take top banana. You've got the deeper smoke, the, the land's halfway down. You've got the molly to flush out players behind the half wall. This is good control established, and you've set up your defense in a very similar situation here. The gap is long, but Nav B, it's just whether they'll find it. Well, the smoke's short and deployed the smokes to take long control. I sort of blow on it, but it doesn't work out. Two players look back and Jelka hits the headshot. Now split onto A commences. Out the apartments is D7. The rest through long. Mana Shine. It's actually Melia hits the shot. She falls. Now Mana Shine's known. D7 delivering. Drone Anna on a very quick flank throw has come up through short, but can't get anything more. A quad from D7. That's a really brilliant round from D7 because it's not only the fact she gets a quad kill, it's all the space she takes in apartments. Pushing Sun's side back. As soon as Astra hears that deep utility in B, they know, okay, it might be a similar setup. We have no control left in Banana. And taking long was the perfect call to make. Even with Sunside trying to sow a seed of doubt in the mind of Na'Vi with the break on the smoke that they put forward into short. 6-4. It's Na'Vi keeping one hand firmly on the lead as they look to extend it further. So it almost gets uh, a chance at the ace too, right? Because her first fight was on the Sunside. Just left her a little bit damaged and Jelka gets the kill. Spike. Oh. I would, I'd love to know just the pure utility damage done to only On Spike. spike. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel like 80% of Na'Vi's utility goes her way during Anna. Oh, oh that no. was brave and it does not work out. And now you should go. Not that they'll know that, but I think uh, an immediate execute could have been the right answer. But instead, it's a more conservative approach for Na'Vi. Leaving D7 out to see if any players push into top brackets. If you don't see anything, you can still reset. There's a minute left. And so far, Letter Cook, the only reaction they've shown is what we know, which is a rotation. Three players lie in wait on B. If Navi just execute, this could go really badly. Despite the player advantage and despite Spike being low, Letter Cook have the reinforcements. Melly has good utility to deploy. Manashine spray, punish. Spike falls as well. Melly with all the utility can't get it involved. It was really Manashine going down, spraying from coffins. It ends up putting the nail in it for Letter Cook because Spike was already low. Manashine was one of those two full HP players that could have helped out. This will be seven for Navi. It's interesting here when you're when you're watching just sort of as a neutral and just appreciating the game for what it is. That round there, it looks wrong from Navi just because they're going into a stack bomb site, right? But it's actually a, a really nice example of what happens when you trust your in-game leader. Because not every decision is going to be statistically by the book the correct one, but everyone believes in it. Notice how quick it is from when they throw their execute smokes to how fast they scale on site. Everyone is going wide. That is so rehearsed, and everyone's got the belief that it doesn't matter how many players are there. They will breach the bomb site. The lack of trades for Letter Cook, considering that there were so many players there on B, is quite astounding. Yeah, Navi look a little bit more um, in the server today than they did yesterday, at least yeah. with how this is playing out thus far. A lot more cohesive, right? Yeah, absolutely. Much more cohesive. We still have a CT side to watch. I don't want to, <laughs> you know... Because that was where the struggles were. There was never any doubt on their T side. This was 3 0, though. And uh, now it's 7 4. True. His history's got a funny way of repeating itself uh, as well. So I, I imagine this ends 7 5. Unless Navi want to flip the script. Sunside getting aggressive with Jonana in Banana. But once again, they, they threaten that they've taken the space and they're just leaving the AWP. A lot of responsibility here for Sunside as Na'Vi Group A. Yeah, 
Again, that Akuka going to have the players in the right position. But now they aren't committed to anything. The bomb is actually still towards ramp. So they're going to have to fall back for it regardless, which to me indicates that they're going to put the pressure on and then maybe rotate. But we'll see. Could just be that Hank is left to bring that later on. No, you're right. On both fronts, in fact. <laughs> Get Viku on the angle here. Oh, the timing, oh, the timing. of that. Sunside re peeking. This is a dangerous game to play. Fortunately, it was on Viku, the sniper, and not one of the riflers. She's stuck. You don't want to put her in the corner. She will try and fight out of it. Viku just wall banged her out the server, but Jonana can still swing. But Hanka is there. A reassurance policy for Na'Vi. The B hit, once again, is working wonders. And the three on four retake is about to commence. Well, that's inside even getting a kill there. D7, pops a dink. She's brought down low. Orp is given over to her. In fact, she picks one up. So double orbs in the post plant. Okay. Certainly a choice. D7's going to go to dark. So you've got them both towards the backside. Decent for holding these different lines. In fact, Miku... She's going to go where D7 is. No, she falls. And D7's low HP. I'm still worried about this. Oh, Hank no. Though, makes it so there's no worries. Hank removes all four. And Na'Vi and the half with eight.
Eight four half for Navi after being down 3-0. When it comes to the gun rounds, Ella Cook found one on that CT side. And now they need to get their signature T side up to their old tricks. But a crossfire felt deadly. And it is. But for Letter Cook, D7 stuck in apartments. All the kills coming in a flurry. And they'll take the pistol. Yeah, uh, the, fir the first pistol round of this game should have been Navi's. This one was Letter Cook's without a doubt. There was no question to this one. They just clicked harder. So, yeah, signature T side starts well. Yontre, serve fresh. That's messy. <laughs> oh, she gets three kills, so. Yeah, yeah I'm more meant for Navi. Yeah. Seven, you're meant to be so good with. This team's meant to be so good with USPs. Oh. They're doing uh, the NIP classic. Pistol round losses, but gun round wins. That's been the tale so far on Inferno for Navi. Looks like it's going to follow suit here. A B stack. One in which Lella Cook are just poking, prodding, trying to find out if there is said stack in a location. And then they can take the bomb elsewhere. Oh, there's the stack. Let's go, A. A nice little kill. Unfortunately, it is a Mac 10. All right, Navi. Pedal to the metal. But Manishine's already here to head them off. Oh, actually, uh... goes past. How it's many okay. can Navi get? I don't know if they can get too many more. One. They've done good damage on the two more players. Yeah, they have. It's done, like actually a lot of damage. I mean, you give this a go, right? You got nothing to lose. Oh, they're setting up the exits, I think. Which makes sense, considering the comms would have been dink, dink, dink. Yeah. I think they can take down two more players. And that would be huge. Even if they just confined to the bomb exploding as well. Gotta remember, radius pretty big on Inferno. Tree. Oh. oh. There we go. Oh, that was, kind of tough, but... that was that was not VK. Yeah, I know. She just spun, you know. Uh, they found the exit. They got rid of Astra. Oh, so, so much, much damage. damage. I think they're all gonna live though. There, there will be fine. Oh, it's planted the CT side. They'll be fine. Uh. Well, only one. Pumping that ADR though. I guess. <laughs> Other than that. All right, well. Not so bad for Letter Cook in the end. They get the rifles out of there too. So it's only reinvestments on the SMG players. Now if you don't keep the MAC-10, who wants it? Nobody. An immediate boost up in the first gun round. Trying to set D7 up for success. Positions herself forward. And speaking of going forward, there goes Jodana. But traded immediately by Astra. All eyes now on top bracket as this tug of war of map control commences. That was such a, a must find frag from Astra. Now the setup looks strong. And a flashbang on B is going to feign two players there. That's why Ash has thrown that. Push out, comes through. Manashine gets one. The swing from Viku. Not quite good enough. And they lose Angelka long. The setup looked good, but it just falls short. Tell you what, that's a really nice touch for, for Letter Cook. And that is to, even though Astra's thrown that flashbang to telegraph players, as you've mentioned, as a, as a consequence of that play, let a cook go contact into top brackets. You see, D7 is consistently positioning herself between anti-flash and not anti-flash because Viku's fallen back a touch to take uh, an eye on apartments. At the same time, I think you had Angelka out long that was starting to get a little bit interested in top brackets to take the space to see if there was anyone in Banana. And by having that contact play, you got the element of surprise there for let a cook. Let Cook take the first gun round. Astra keeps an AK. Can bring a bit of threat into this next round, but not too much around it. Yeah, Joker just runs through that. 
trying to help out her teammates does not help her. What's the plan here with these pistols, Narvi? Aggression in apartments, it would seem, with Astra and the Soul Rifle being there as well. But how far do you want to push? How many players are holding? That's a nice question to figure out for Na'Vi. This setup is the one I wanted Letter Cook to do. But without this push, never mind, Astra's got the kill. Just keep going, Astra. Why not? He's seven times in, and this is actually big because it's going to force them to go to B, which is where they've got three players lying in wait. Smoke's dropped. Joanna's going to commit through it. And Joker gets the kill. That's an AK recovered for Hango, who has armor. And they still feel like they have to go B. There's a HE that can be deployed by the T's if they want to get in. Oh, but Angelica's hit another, trying to walk through. Oh my goodness, Angelica on the side hole, comes up trumps, 3k for her. And Astra's push with D7 completely sends him straight into her. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, and, and the fact that you've also got the CT player jiggling, taking the first contact, it makes it look like there's only one defender there. So Joanna is so tunnel visioned. That just sets up Angelka. It, it's scrappy from Letter Cook. You spoke about the nade being deployed and, and it was in the end by Sun's side, but I'm not sure why they didn't do that when they have more players alive, you know? J just, just having one player stand either side of the smoke as it bursts and then you've got probably favorable trades rather than just running through the gray screen. Yeah, it's the, I think it's the classic journey just trying to make the quick decision, right? And that is Letter yeah. Cook's kind of mantra that they want to make the very fast play. They've lost control on A. We're just going to go B fast. The smoke, the reaction from Navi is great, right? They immediately drop the smoke. Joanna is kind of already starting to think, I need to push B now. So she kind of just commits to it at that point, which means if she goes down, which she does immediately, there's no ability to follow through. So it's a hugely risky play and it does not work out. It's that risk versus reward mentality of Letter Cook. And it's how often do you want to roll the dice versus playing a bit more safer. D7 wanting to go boiler and instead just drops her utility and falls back. This one is going to be a lot more conservative. A passive play with a crossfire on site with VQ just leveraging the information of no one out boiler, no one top middle yet. So this setup's uh, really good for an apps pop. Last round, Navi went in with an M4 and four pistols. Now they have an M4 and four AKs. Feels good. Now these, like, how have I got this space? Ah, that's how. Angelica sitting back. Little goblin in the corner. Unexpected strikes. Uh, on the second time, doesn't find success in Peaky oh, no. Falls. Now, D7's been baited extremely well. <gasps> oh! <laughs> <laughs> what? See ya. Spike may only have five kills, but that one's the most impactful one of the game. That was a drive-by. Madashine's got to take the credit, but that shot onto D7 ruins Na'Vi's ability to have any follow-up in the round whatsoever. D7 had a, had a double kill there every day of the week, right? Spike's low. Madashine's about to run in with the bomb in her hand. Yeah, 9.9 .9 times out of 10. That's a multi-kill. That's going to be an exciting <laughs> replay to watch. I'm in shock. Terrorists win. We Those did say look, we needed everyone there. We said we needed crazy. the whole floor to level up. From the POV of D7, it looks ridiculous. I think when we see this from Spike's POV, it's going to look really normal. I think that's always how these kills go. True. Huge double up from Mana Shine there. Okay, no, that was pretty nah, crazy. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty snappy. Yeah. yeah. That keeps the economy honest for Na'Vi as well. We got one more buy in this. And it'll have to be an eco. Again, this double setup in apps, this time spearheaded by the AWP of Viku. No push out of Astra early. Mana shine. 
How nosy does she want to be in apartments? D7 gets the timing and needs the kill on Melly, but it's only a dink. D7, uh, Melly takes down two. Remove the AWP as well, which is why she decided to scale. They are going to be getting into A, and the rotation is here. And Jelka on the fall down, removes that AWP, repositions onto Cold, and the players go straight past her. Hanka slides in for a follow up onto Spike, and it leaves it to Sunside, who's been brought down low. And Jelka from below will bail them out. Navi onto double digits. That's a positioning masterclass for Angelka. The guardian angel of the A-bomb site because it's her smoke that she deploys to make all of that madness happen. Gets a little bit of a one-way for Melly coming out of balcony. Gets a little bit fortunate when she falls off, but after that, it's just brilliant. Reposition after reposition. It keeps Leather Cook guessing, shrouded by mystery of that smoke as well. Uh, and that shuts down what could have been a really potent A call, especially with Melly getting that double header. Yeah, massive double up from Melly. It's a real shame they couldn't capitalize on it. That smoke is the MVP for sure. Because it even just denies Melly having good angles to shoot from for maps. Or maybe it even enticed her to, to look a bit more. Rather than sitting back and waiting for her team. So, well done Angelica deploying that using it to its fullest. Let cook still get a buy out of this one, but it comes with Tech 9 for Joe Nana and, and a Galil for Melly. And again for VQ. She won't be contested in this one. Joe Nana looking to walk through. God, I was a little worried for half a second there. Nah, she got up. Hanker does secure. Uh, if, I'm just saying this right now. If Na'Vi win this round, they win the game. Okay. Just just based on the momentum and based, obviously, on the eco of the T side. Because Ladder Cook have got decisions to make in the next round if they lose it, whether they're all in, playing for regulation, or they're saving for OT. It's an interesting smoke thrown by the CTs. I don't know if it was meant to land there on short. It, it blocked Melee out of boiler, but... I don't know, it's just a funky one. I guess it's in response to that long smoke that's landed. Yeah, so it, it's more to block rather than for them to do anything with. Yeah. So you, you completely deny them from scaling, and it also allows D7 to be a bit wider on balcony so she can get information a little bit earlier. And this has done the job because you have got Letter Cook to rotate back in towards B. It's Astra being the master puppeteer once more. And you've also got VQ who can come over and support on the AWP. She's got a flash that you can set up the rifle as with. He's seven's pushed into the apartments as well, so it's going to allow a rotation quicker. You would think VQ just gets crawled on. Can this crossfire hold strong? That was the first second, but Astra falls. Henker can't quite convert on the sun side. Might get that chance in a second. Now a double up on the coffins. Henker falls off, wants to keep at least even between two teams. We've got that fast flank up the banana. D7 asserts full control so they know that these players are stuck on the side. There's nowhere else they could be and D7 gets a freebie. It's all under mana shine. Tucked in the first oranges. A wide swing does a lot of damage and surely should be enough to finish the job. Angelka confirms it and Na'Vi win the round. It's just really good work by the A players. Uh, and by actually using that block smoke, it gives them more info, even though it looks like it, it's restricting them. Because you've got control of long, you've got control of short, Ladder Cook will have to again push her a smoke if they want that info. And then you've got the space in towards the apartment. So because you've got the advanced space in towards apartments, you can then set up for this second mid push. You can then set up for a quick flank on Banana. Without this kill from D7, I don't think that retaker has got legs to it. It's the speed of the rotation that's the key thing there for Na'Vi. Let it cook, make a lot of things happen there with very little. Last smoke. BQ deploys counter one in response. Does Melly want to push through this? Answer, a resounding yes. Nothing but grey, but she does get the space. However, there are a lot of CTs that are aware of this possibility. Hanker 
does convert it. It's a little messy and looking like a pop out the apartment. Smoke will land, but going to be ignored. Out they come and into D7. They go. Only good for the one, but Angelica still lies in wait. And that is a disgusting shot. Anishan recovers the AK and makes good work Ooh. with it. Viku. Shots dealt back in kind. And Joker can do it. So can Nana Shine. Sentry dropped, hoping for this push, but doesn't come immediately. A tap, Hanker doesn't budge. That's really baited. Oh. Oh, Nana Shine knows. She's holding for this. She's got the right idea. Another fake out on the bomb, perhaps, to entice Astra into the peak, but Astra hits the shot. Tell you what, Mana Shine plays that so well. And it's just so unfortunate that she can't land the shots on Astra. Hank has deliberately made noise there to bait her looking that way so that Astra can keep progressing up apartments. And Mana Shine realized it. I think if she has armor, that's, that's just, she can actually win that round. The way she plays is perfection. Yeah. That fight against Astra, I think, with the armor is won. And Hank is low, but of course, that wasn't the, the world we lived in. The world we live in is Na'Vi on that point on Inferno. To at least keep that win rate around 90%. Yeah, not bad, is it? This is nice util because it forced them forward into Viku. But she can't hit the shot. Astra can and has spotted a third player. She backs out a dodge the rotated tier. It doesn't overcommit. She definitely could have, <laughs> but decides not to. Playing the numbers. Oh, well, goes down anyway. Oh, <gasps> okay. Jumping through and now Melly hears the rotate. No way. <laughs> no way. What are these kills? Everyone's just flying around corners. We watching the F1. I'm seeing Ferrari peaks left, right, and center. A course correction. Navi looking to pull off this retake. Manashine is low from all of that fighting earlier where she forced her way through the smoke. Flashbang's going to set up D7 and Angelka to swing. Need to get past this cool player close by. Oh, ho, 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 what a round from Manashine. The fact that she walks through the smoke and kills Hanker is the most impressive one of the lot. And that sets up Let Her Cook to stay alive. Look at the money now for Na'Vi. It's not existent. And they're on first stage loss. When Astra gets back, he thinks all said and done. And then Manashine does this. I can't believe that. Oh, the double headshot clothesline. Goodness gracious. Well, that has really put a bit of hole in the pockets of Navi. We've got a flashbang for Astra. She can drop an AWP to Viku. But to be real, has been struggling. We saw it at the start of that round even. Just the, the tag, not the finishing blow. Had a great... Well, I had a couple of great maps this weekend, but also a couple where it hasn't been the usual reliant piece. This one's pretty much confirmed as Junana walks into CT spawn. Can Letter Cook force OT again versus Na'Vi on Inferno? It's going to be tough. I think Na'Vi, what they need to do is, is try and break the mold in some of these rounds because all we've seen out of them is two two variations. And that is the apartment set up with D7 close, neither Astra or VQ at the end of apps. Or you send VQ over towards Banana. Now that's been the only like differences we've seen out of them on the CT side. If they go for one of these like second mid pops with like a, a deep smoke down middle, asserting that control whilst it would assume and be risky on the face of it, I think that's a direct counter to what Letter Cook are doing. And I think that is the last thing as well that this Letter Cook team would expect out of Na'Vi. Two AKs, a decent haul for Na'Vi. I'd love a timeout here from Na'Vi as well. I've not really seen too many timeouts at all this map. <sighs> oh, 
I'm gonna get one here. VQ does get the AWP delivered by Angelica. There's that smoke. Aladica could drop one right in the mouth of top racket, so it's a boost over the top instead for VQ. We've seen this a couple of times. You can see that it's been spammed as well. Sunside, she knows full well about boost, but still meets her end from it. VQ with the opener, a critical one at this juncture. Good reaction here from Letter Cook, knowing that the boost was set up in short, meaning that Apps is probably vacant. It's why D7's put a block smoke down at the end of balcony. But they assert the control. They've got the space. It's now up to Na'Vi to figure out where this hit is going. The bomb is firmly positioned over at B, with Mana Shine taking space. The issue for Letter Cook here is that they've not really made any noise there in apartments. But Na'Vi haven't rotated. They've only got one flashbang to get in B here, Lucy. Another smoke for Hanka. If she just drops that in the next couple of seconds, like as soon as she sees something in the air, they have to force their way through this. She's gonna drop it. There's the flash, counter flash in response. They're full blind. Hanka, easy enough. A 3k spray down. They go straight into the guillotine on B and Navi will take Inferno. Another win for the tally. What a really good counter flash that was. Because you know Letter Cook are just going to charge at you. That's what they've been doing. Every single one of these banana executes. They're disrespecting utility. They're disrespecting your authority. Rachel was able to step in and help them on Friday. But uh, and considering she was their, their best player through all of the, the finals, you know, they've really had to adapt this season. And to be able to even get to this stage where they have the chance of qualification just shows what that core has got in the tank, but they're going to have to put it all on show here. Dust 2, the map pick of Let Her Cook, their last chance. Can Navi do it in two? Or do we go to Ancient? Let's find out. It's Let Her Cook on that T side immediately. And something you'll notice with Navi as we progress in this CT half is keep your eye on tunnels because they love to push it incredibly proactively. And Let Her Cook are just incredibly aggressive. They're already out. Mid to B. Um, Viku's pushed. Does she get away? Just about. And Angelka is locking down B as we speak. This is a collapse from Letter Cook in mid. An absolute collapse. Well, now if you get their first pistol, it looks like it. Granana falls. Spike. Anything to be said. Not at Oh, Hanka with the double kill. Na'Vi get their first pistol round of the series. They do it with all five alive. And that wasn't anything complicated. That was Letter Cook trying to put the pace in towards mid, try and catch out Na'Vi. But Na'Vi are taking very deep sight lines in towards B. And they had all the long control already. And it's just a case of Na'Vi winning out their gunfights against Letter Cook. And they were all one-on-one. -on -one. So you remember, that was something that Dreamcatchers didn't allow Na'Vi to have. Those one-on-ones, it always felt unfair. It always felt like Dreamcatchers were overwhelming Na'Vi. That was not the case here in that pistol round. So we're going to kick some footy. We're going to have a little squad meet up to try and reset and get the vibes back. You see teams do this uh, at LAN to get their confidence up here. Seeing it now. Sunside missed the goal hole, but Manashan's got the ball back under control. They might do this for the whole round. And you know what? I don't hate it because you're getting the util out at least from Na'Vi. I don't know who was playing who there. I feel like they need to set the the rules of who was going to actually. No, no, that was just that was just a that was just a kickabout. It was a, uh, let's pass it for a bit. Let, let's wind down the clock uh, and try and plant the bomb. Oh, the seven gets dinked. There is util, right. but there's also the whole squad. Uh, it's fine. It's actually, fine. Someone will go grab that. VQ, run quick. That's all good. Everyone's nice. on the same page. MP9 gets upgraded. So, you know, sometimes the death is worth it. Let a cook just pass the vibe check. <laughs> they passed the can, vibe check. Can we? No, I don't want to see the replays of the kills, guys. Can we have replays of the kickabout? Uh, top three play of the day. Just the kickabout, please. The kickabout. Yeah.
Just for that, no one in the map. Late long. It's gonna burst out. Big no. Oh, huge Holy. nade. But Anishan gets the kill through the smoke, so favors the melee. Also catches the push from D7. Yep. You gotta be aware of that. If you've watched any Navi demos, you, you know that D7 will just push. You can punish. Oh, timing is brutal for melee. Hank has already scaled. And this is the dynamic push and pull effects of map control that Navi can have. It, they leave long? Sure. Okay. Well, we lost control in towards tunnels. We'll take it back with short. That smoke's missed the mark for VQ, but she can still post. Yeah, it's actually a slightly annoying smoke, I think, for Letter Cook as well. Who it's going to favor, but with all that damage done by that heat here with mana shine and four HP, you still give Navi a pretty decent advantage here with three KGs. These could really do some serious damage. First one doesn't. And maybe the follow ups will hanker on the sling. <laughs> Careful. Oh my gosh. Finally, a kill comes through. This has been a bit of a standoff on the ramp, and it's Viku's orb. We talked about her needing to step up in this map, and well, it starts with the sniper cleanly, a triple <gasps> kill. Goes back for more with the low HP and mana shine. Speaking of low HP, the bomb plant is just not going to happen. Surely, there's no way. He tries to punch it in. The swing will come from Hanker. Navi, he's three alive against that four push from Lung. They played it really well as well because you, you've actually got Hanker swinging wide and people might think that's ill-advised, but it's all to set up VQ and it's also to drop a further HE. The comms would have been that that nade landed cleanly in long tunnels because of the speed of Mana Shine pushing out and getting the opening kill. You set VQ up for success, she will deliver. That's a win condition for Na'Vi and it's one that's already got them three rounds on this CT side. That was even that was a 3v5. Oh, VQ again. 7 and 0 start. This is just against the pistols, but it's good to see her really getting active early. Janana pushes through the smoke. Astra needs to be careful. We'll get the kill. Even four rounds deep, you see, you're seeing Navi play this buddy system on CT, uh, and it, you, and it's through middle. So you've got the lurks that will often do their own thing, but in towards mid, you've got this pack mentality of Astra, Hanker pushing, trying to take space. Hanker's now just tucked in Goose. We'll do a mana shine and swiftly dispatches a sunside melee. Last player standing, and Joker's on an angle you're never expecting. That's 4-0, and this is dominant from Na'Vi, and you're already asking questions of this T-side here for Leather Cook. You've got to remember that the T-side is where Leather Cook thrive. True. I mean, that's really been the conversation for both these teams. So for Na'Vi to start off their CT side so well, I think this is just a massive side of relief for them. So I'll have faith in that second half. Spawn for the long peak. Mana Shine misses the mark, so she'll fall off. Sunside, come back. and he's give you the AWP. He's having playing close this time, but not pushing. As soon as she sees Melly, she'll just drop a smoke. Has got the support here of Astra. Meanwhile, Letter Cook just evolving into more of a default. Take space in towards Catwalk. They've got tunnels. Next stage is short. But that means going into VQ again. Avi have already taken all the control in the tunnels. They push their smoke and they're going to be flanking very quickly. You see Spike is aware of it, but how aware can you be? The double push. Now, the thing is, yeah... 
They could come back to clear it. D7 cannot push any further because that gives them an open runway to go to B. She needs to pause here. If she extends and falls, the whole round will fall apart. And she knows this. Rely on VQ. Warp in hand. Ready for this peak. That one's easy. Jonana just walks straight into her crosshair. And Jelka doesn't need to budge. The setup is perfection. And Viku, the poster girl of all perfection, put down eventually by Sunside. That's all that she's going to be allowed. It's simple. The, the thing is, Na'Vi is so static in this setup on A because obviously all of the, the movement is coming from B. And it's yet again that tunnels push that I've already spoken about. They've done it now twice three times over in, in five rounds of play. And what's fun here about this one is that Astra and D7 take the space, but Astra's the only one that swings. So you leave D7 in a position where she could immediately swing to trade, or she can wait and be like the late round lurk policy for Na'Vi. You force Let Her Cook to go into the sniper. And now Let Her Cook are trying to force their way out B. Astra and D7 Pass the test with flying colors. And between the two of them, they get an ace. Yeah, 21 points of damage. All that's inflicted by Let Her Cook. Now this is a CT side. You got to punish this tunnel's aggression. Uh, and the way you do that is by dedicating the player in towards deep spawn to, to hold for the push. But by doing that, you're also limiting options. And also, you might be falling into the condition that Na'Vi has set. They've done it so much early. They might never need to go in towards upper tunnels again. But the threat will always be there. And this is... Lucy, this is Na'Vi 6-0, and Letter Cook have got five kills. Oh, yeah, that's... That's rough, <laughs> to say the very least. Sunside tries to catch D7 on the jiggle, but it doesn't quite work out. Yeah, they're so worried about that tunnel's push. Three players early dedicated to it. Maddie will deploy a lurk smoke, so she's going to stay active here. Keep Try and keep Na'Vi in that bomb site. That's fine, though, because if you're Na'Vi, in theory, you don't really care about that because you've got Viku in the prime spot again. But as Letter Cook throw this dual smoke to scale up catwalk, guess who's there with the up? VQ holding, and you've got you've got Angelka that's securing deep long. You've got Hanker that can come and rotate. Remember, we've got these new boxes in Dust 2. She can just scale up the side. Yeah, VQ got a double kill from that position last time around. Here they go again. <laughs> yeah, the push. They're just going to keep doing it. How do they keep getting away with this? Trinidad's going back with the bomb. Oh, hoo -hoo. Nice shot. Now, will she hard clear Astra here? We'll half clear it, but half clear, not quite enough. The trade is perfection, though. And the scaling through middle, this actually looks good for Letter Cook. Na'Vi can't get away with that push every round. This time it's punished. That's a, that's a really nice reaction to, to what's been happening. Jonana going with the bomb there is risky, but you've got the majority of your forces going through lower and in towards mid. But Hanker deals with Melly. Spike now tucked in the corner. Hanker's going to go clear it instantaneously. This was a four on three, and suddenly the advantage is with Na'Vi. And Sang wants to get aggressive, sees the shadow, needs to find the edge of this body. The flashbang blinds her, though. That was the best chance of getting the equalizing frag. And maybe it'll be Mana Shine that'll offer up a bit of magic, but no way, no how. Hanka and Viku both get their 10th frag in synchronicity. A no scope from Viku. <laughs> Viku's scratching. Her face goes like, I earned that defuse. I did. I hit the nose Hanker scope, but Hanka kill. got three kills. <laughs> That's her defuse. Sorry, Viku. You've been that brilliant. Was, that was so good.
That retake never looks like, and obviously even attempt it, but they the are running on confidence. In the game. Pure confidence. Let her cook a scared to peek. The only aggression comes out of Sunside. She gets caught by that flash, and she gets caught by the barrel of the AWP from Viku. 7-0. And now, if you're Leto Cook, you feel like this game is escaping you. Melly could deal with Viku. Instead, it's Spike. She outstays her welcome. A little bit too long on the catwalk. Yeah, feeling very bold and brave with those peaks. No support by her side. Spike scale middle. Astra maybe has a chance to isolate. Great name. Just be careful. Heichi. Again, it's Spike that always <laughs> meets this utility. Grenade magnet. Nice kill from Jonata. The contact, brilliant. Angelka can't convert the spray. Let it cook surely on the board here. This will be another retake that Na'Vi think about giving a go. They've got so much money. And Astra's just seen melee. With D7 clearing out lower, I think this is probably going to be a save now. Unless they double up and go short quick. Nah. You don't need to go in, to be fair. Any damage is good damage, remember. Made the stage with the money. On a shine. Oh, oh, oh. Molly actually forces Astra forward. Do you really want to force Astra to you? <laughs> she smiles. Yeah, okay. Not actually going to hunt this one this time. This was uh, another round that reminds me a lot of Inferno, where Leather Cook change up the, the pace and go pure contact rather than telegraph in their execute with utility. Keep VQ guessing a little bit, but it's actually the riflers where Na'Vi get caught on a timing. They wanted to scale and have a look in towards short with two players and they get undone by just not being aware and anticipating that Leather Cook have already scaled. Boost for VQ. Normally only one outcome, but not this time. More damage to Spike. <laughs> There's VQ with the opener. Sunside tries to peek aggressively. Spike will be rewarded with a follow-up kill on the hanker. VQ missed the mark on that one. Spike gets away. Melly scales quickly. A dink. Not enough for the kill, but Astra still lies in wait. And it's only Astra. Three letter cook players charging straight into her. HE deployed to slow them down. The swing does damage. The kill does more. Oh, Astra finds the double. And it's left to Mana Shine, the one versus two. We'll get that bomb down, and it's VQ and Angelka to retake. Just go together. Uh, that's all you need to do here. Mana Shine's trying to get ahead of the AWP play, the swing. You feel like it's going to be unexpected, but that's why you swing together. So if one falls, the other can trade. Angelka can scoop up the AWP and put Na'Vi back in the swing of things. Let her cook find one round, but consecutive is a different story. What a hole from Astra there. D7 gets the dink. Astra immediately slides in to convert that kill and then realizes they're charging at her. The HE deploy does so much damage. So when she wins that first trade, first kill, the, the swap onto the second is clean. You get to see that back, how she pulls this one off. Only needs a couple of shots from that second player. Thanks to that damage she did with the util. And this is what I was worried about with Lila Cook in terms of doing the same thing over and over again. Because Na'Vi have conditioned them in towards tunnels and the fact that they will always take that space, you have to keep running the, the same default. And the only time Lila Cook have really probed long is when Mana Shines had the spawn to go for the orc pick. Outside from that, I don't think we've seen them scale there once. I'm going to be trying mid to be. 
Viku in window might be unexpected. Manishine gets the kill onto Angelka. Viku fires off the shots and lets them know. Oh, Astra perfectly spammed. So a kill returned. Angelka died on blue box of all positions as well. Blue bin. Astra getting another kill on the spam. This mid to B, it's not even getting past mid. Vicky PG50, Jordan. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that. Uh, and then Hank has walked long. Uh, there, there's so many gaps in this offense because of the default, because of what Na'Vi have been doing. But Melee looks to unlock the door. She might find it on A, but there's resistance immediately. Two players are waiting. And she's on 4 HP. Up and over. It's a nice try on D7. But she will collect on the low HP Melee. Another round in the docket for Na'Vi. 9-1. And that means they are four rounds away from Stockholm. Yeah, domination from Na'Vi. Astra, what a round from her as well. What a clear from Manishai. Yeah. Astra just gets them by spraying. Two kills just spraying. And then the dink onto a third as well. What's that I can't mean? believe Viku gets that kill. That's ridiculous. NT from Melly, but Na'Vi always working in tandem in these two-on-ones. They want to fight long on both sides. It's going to be a brawl. Joanna gets out quickly. The Sunside Orb, though, strikes true. Will the respin come? Flash over is perfect. Joanna tucked in. Hanka gets to Biku, her own. Bomb in the open. Sunside stuck in the corner. Burt to a crisp. Na'Vi can taste it. Manashine, a 1v3 to give Letter Cook a second round. Na'Vi are showing no mercy. That was an unbelievably good call out of Astra. Uh, and if you think about it, the, the only rounds in, in which Letter Cook have found definitive entries have actually come from Long. Uh, and with that Manashine immediate clear on Angelka in blue bin... It's almost like a full sense of security because let a cook think, oh, Na'Vi are just going to take the space again like they've been doing. We can just overwhelm. And that's the way That's the way in. And Astra reads into it perfectly. Four players take long for Na'Vi. And that's the exact moment let a cook look to strike. But take a listen about how this utility has just dismantled them. Because not only is it just Molly after Molly here keeping Mana Shine out, it was the flashbang. And then the follow-up flashbang... A Na'Vi swing. They've got the belief that the utility is going to do enough. It's the last thing Lada Cook expects. Nice shot out of Mana Shine. She's made it into a 1v1. Speaking about how good it's been. But the aim from Mana Shine was nearly home in dry. But it's D7 to keep Na'Vi afloat. Double digits for them. But how close that comes off the back of Mana Shine. Yeah, always, always good for one of those rounds. Can't quite convert it, but an MT from a very unfavorable position. This started with the opening kill going the way of Letter Cook, but that counter utility is perfection. The reaggress on long. You gotta stop climbing up on blue bin events, Manishine. She's always ready for it. <laughs> Vicky hits the leg. Good start for Spike. Fast playing towards short. Jonanna oh, looked to get ahead of the molly, but couldn't quite do it. And that nade. Serious damage being inflicted. The molly will push Hanker off. But there's so much utility they can keep throwing. And Viku could just be put on the angle instead. Viku slides in. Smoke will come ahead. So he drops an incendiary, falls back. It doesn't do too much. They continue to progress. Miku's ready. Counter utility comes forward. Hanker hits one full blind. Oh, she finds a second as well. That long range spray doing wonders. And Viku's still here. Viku is still here and she is still dangerous. Final kill goes the way of Viku. Navi, 11 rounds. They are unstoppable.
statement of a CT side for Na'Vi. 11 rounds. They can see Stockholm in their future. And they are moments away from realizing it. Flashbangs are plenty in middle. Jonana hits the deck early. Na'Vi are not messing around. Not at all. No pistols on Inferno, but looking to get both here. Absolute cruise control. You question the veto. But it's not looking like it was ever going to be a concern for Na'Vi. Let her cook. Could have gone Anubis. Could have gone Ancient. Decided Dust 2. That might have been a costly error. Yeah, no, I was I was asking more the veto question for Let Her Cook, to be honest. Uh, I thought Dust 2 was a bit of a rogue one, but I was like, okay, well, maybe if you've prepared that quite a lot, then we're, we're chilling, uh, and maybe they've got something up their sleeve. Don't get me wrong, I expect it to be a lot more competitive than this, but I know how good this CT side is from Na'Vi on D2. Uh, I think if you're watching this, if you're our participant going to Stockholm, you look at this Na'Vi CT D2, and yes, there are weaknesses, but at the same time, it's scary. And so is that. A lowers push, but Angelka and Astra are making it still go in their favor. It's a two versus two now. Manstein and Sun's side, the only players standing for Leto Cook and the only ones standing in the way of the path to Stockholm for Na'Vi. Two kills. We'll get them tickets to the finals. At the moment, Leto Cook don't budge. Manstein sticks in middle where she can catch any rotations. We'll start to get curious now. If she goes to clear uppers or anything, then... Okay, no, she's going to push top middle. If she goes long, it could be this. good. Yes, but she's got an MP9 at range. Yes. Navi are scaling really slowly, though, and Manashine doesn't investigate in towards long hauls. So Navi have got a red carpet rolled out for them, courtesy of this smoke to A. Once this bomb goes down, I let a cook have such a difficult time into this round. No kits. Yeah, no kits, no armor on Sunside, even utility. It's a single smoke grenade. Hanka and Angelka have everything in their hands to secure this. And Shine's crept close. Had an opportunity, had a timing, good damage. Hanka lives on one HP. Sunside, the new addition to this team needs to come in clutch, but she's not giving a chance. Na'Vi, don't give them anything on Dust 2. And you can see what it means. The fire has been lit. Na'Vi Javelins are going to Stockholm. The team that was built to win. The team that broke away from the Polish lineup to become international.